in this is your line. You said, uh, watching lesbian porn is like watching a, a video of just ramps and nobody riding them. <laughs> and you're like, I got to admit it, bro. I got to have some cock in my porn. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm Chris. I'm May. And we're very excited because we have our very special guest, Steve-O, is here with us. Yeah, dude. You. Can I say that I've been begging for you to do this for so long. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, uh, I feel choked up. I feel so uh, emotional to, to see you with the studio, like making content. So let's just give it to him hard. Where, where are we? <laughs> let's let's stick it to him where the sun don't shine. My cock's hard. I'm ready to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Who's it gonna be? <laughs> All right. So you've been on tour the past few months. I mean, I've been on tour for for years. And how's gosh, it been going? Gosh, dang darn it! Uh, man, I love it. Like I I love it. Um, it's I reached a point where where the, all of the grinding and battling and trudging through airports to get to comedy clubs like really finally paid off and i made that leap to big theaters amazing and so now i just live on a tour bus with with my boys got my editor so i'm creating content and the tour bus just magically appears at these theaters where i do my love shows it. doing what you're born to do oh i love it because you're really really your first home is the stage well, yeah. I mean, I everything I do is motivated by one thing, and that is attention seeking. So whatever it is, if it's in front of the camera, if it's on the stage, if even if it's on the mic, the medium doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if the medium is is a a freaking diner at two a.m. and you're a waitress just trying to clock out. You're going to deal with my tricks. I remember <laughs> your trick, exactly. I remember when I first met you. But I, I mean, after we we. We pulled you from the, the flea market circus in Fort right. Lauderdale. Yeah. And our first night really hanging out and broing down together. Yeah. We were playing on on like the balcony or something at that motel. I, that yeah, I was at. I was I was showing my skills for climbing over a balcony railing and and then like dropping down onto the balcony below and then climbing back up. So you were showing me these amazing skills of yours, and the security guard comes rolling up on the golf cart. He's like, Hey guys, and you're like Bro, it's cool. Check this out. And you, <laughs> you did like a little press, like into a yeah. handstand. Yep. And I was like, why does that make you cool? Like, and, and he's like, he's, you're like, I can, hold, and I he's can like, hold a handstand perfectly still. <laughs> Were you was, naked? No, he wasn't naked, oh. but he was shirtless. Oh, yeah. Just pants on. I'll never forget it. And and uh, then uh, then the guy's like, oh, yeah, I bought you drinks for doing tricks for me <laughs> like one time at some bar. I was like, the guy had actually met you in a bar. Yeah, everybody. And I mean, next... everybody deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was everybody's problem. <laughs> and the next day, we went to breakfast. And this Not knowing each other at all. It knowing of even, each other. It wasn't even the next day. It was that night before we even slept. <laughs> we, were we, were, we were just drunk as a skunk. And it was like 2 in the morning. And we walked for quite a while. So far. And, and it was just you and I. And you explained what it was going to be like because i had no idea what what jack has what the format was and i remember after like really annoying you and the waitress with my tricks walking back you described it you said every episode knoxville is going to do like three things each of us is going to do like one thing <laughs> It was something like that. Something along the lines of that. And I was just like, man, wow. And I was really stoked on you, dude. Like I was stoked on you too. And I, I think it I think at the beginning there there was a lot I think I was joking around when I when I was like I mean, we can be honest. I was a lot. You know, <laughs> I, I was a lot to handle. I think everybody um everybody recognized that uh that I added value oh, to, yeah. to the team. I got good footage. In space. Yeah. Yeah, I got good footage, but I never turned off. Like the camera, when the cameras were put away, everybody else was able to kind of stop being on. And, yeah. I, and I was not ever able to stop being on. And as such, I was, I, I was tough. You were, you were a wild card. You weren't the refined gentleman that you've become, 
but you were amazing. And I remember talking to Jeff Tremaine about you like around that time. And he's like, Steve-O is the definition of jackass. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've never heard that, but I was like, uh, I'm touched. I'm honored by he that. He totally is. Like, you can't argue it. <laughs> like, yeah. on and off, like, yeah. He's 100% jackass. Like, they, they, they're like, a, <laughs> like <laughs> I, I definitely didn't carry on much differently off camera as I did on. Totally. And then we were eating, I think, in Miami Beach the next day, and we we're talking. To, the subject of pornography came up, and and <laughs> and we we were both uh, we agreed that we didn't like all girl porn. We had right. no we had no time at all actually for all girl porn. Yeah. Because it was like going to a skate park. <laughs> And seeing no one actually skating. Well, yeah, the you obstacles. said, you, and this is your line. You said, uh, watching lesbian porn is like watching a, a video of just ramps and nobody <laughs> riding them. <laughs> and you're like, yes. I gotta admit it, bro. I gotta have some cock in my porn. <laughs> yeah, big time. Big time. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you something about, about the live shows. Have there been times where, Things got out of hand, and someone in the audience came to actually attack you. Oh yeah, there was. Um, I mean, that, back on the old tour, uh, which you were on at times with uh, the, the 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 guy from Cleveland who uh, booked us. It was called the "Don't Try This at Home" tour. I believe it was New Year's Eve in calgary maybe uh a day or two before or after uh -huh. but uh performing in calgary i was on stage and um i was just like didn't even see it coming some some guy got on the stage and just sucker punched me wow like, from maybe from behind wow it was uh it was it was an absolutely uncalled for attack during the middle of my performance and the 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 my assailant was appropriately uh retaliated upon by by um by everybody else on the stage wow. including preston wow he, he, he was tackled by uh by uh you know really a group yeah <laughs> preston preston turned into a whole other animal he's and, strong like, yeah preston he's, lacy, i've wrestled with him he's so strong preston lacy and, and preston lacy had a microphone in his hand oh my gosh he, which he which preston took to this assailant's trying head. to trying to who knows and i i i, I I seem to recall it looked like he was using the head of the microphone as like a cheese grater, <laughs> just, <laughs> just grating this guy's forehead off with it. That's what it looked like to me. And uh, and and he was he was he was roughed up appropriately. And uh, and, and they 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 carried him. They carried this this assailant off the stage and as they carried him away kind of like by all fours and you know like i hauled off and kicked the guy yeah. <laughs> i hauled off and kicked the guy while he was defenseless being carried away and for that um for for that they they deemed that my little extra kick was uncalled for and that it was actually uh, a criminal offense no way and preston was deemed to have overdone it as well uh -huh. so there were uh warrants issued this by the way was right at the tippy tippy beginning of 2004. wow and uh warrants were issued at that time but no we way. but we get but and we ran away from cops that night no and way. and we just got away without without ever hearing about it again until 2011 when i showed up in calgary and i'm on the news and they said have you ever been to calgary before and i said well yeah we were actually here and we ran from cops because we beat up this guy uh -huh. and uh i thought it was a fun story to regale yeah. the, the news with yeah but apparently the police <laughs> were watching the news <laughs> and when i left uh when i was going through immigration to fly home from calgary uh -huh. they asked me to oh yeah cool man just like uh if you could <laughs> hang out in this room real quick Hanging out in that room, and sure enough, they come in, handcuffed me. They tricked me. you. <laughs> they picked me up on an outstanding warrant. No way. Yeah, and and uh, Preston Lacey, sadly, was was dragged into it, had to hire an attorney himself. Oh, my God. Yeah. For just defending you, too. For defending me, And yeah. you being a lover, you're all, you've always been a lover, not a fighter. Did it feel good to see your bros, like, so eager to defend you? It, I mean, it's always been you defending me. I Yeah, I was, I mean... I gotta admit, sometimes it, it was a great excuse to, to have a little tussle. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I, I was touched. I, I was touched, and um, you know, I also believe in uh, 
you know, clearing away the wreckage of my past, like that outstanding warrant. Like I, I welcomed the opportunity to to right that wrong of the past, yeah. and I did. And 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 to the extent that I dragged Preston into it, it brought us closer, and so that was cool too. Did you have to serve time? I didn't, but I spent. <sighs> I don't know if it was 11 hours oh. or like 14 hours That's too long. in a holding tank that wow. day, a holding cell. And I'll tell you, while I was in that holding cell in Calgary, um, I mean, I got sober in 2008 and this was again, 2011. Mm. And I remember like sitting in that holding cell hours and hours and hours and a bunch of other people who had been taken into custody by the police were sort of paraded by, uh -huh. you know, like the, the jail was going about their business. Uh -huh. And each guy that, that I saw go by my cell was just drunker than the last. <laughs> yeah, Drunker than the last. <laughs> and I remember thinking, man, if I pick up a drink again, that's me. Like yeah. this, this, <laughs> this is where I'll be chilling. And I remember it like, uh, it just gave me an, another little boost to, um, to really like make make sure that I, I protect my sobriety. That's amazing. And you, how long are you sober now? Almost fifteen years. Awesome. Yeah. Congrats. Thank so you. stoked on you. It's crazy, dude. Fifteen years. Isn't it amazing how life is completely fun without? Getting it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, dude, it's way funner. It is. Yeah. Wait, like, how I mean, dude, many years are you sober? I don't know. Three, uh, three or four. Three, or four. Uh, three, because yeah. of X. Yeah. Three. All right. Yeah. So I'm doing four or yeah. Fantastic. I, I yeah. do. I love it. You know, yeah. when, when, when you get, I don't miss it at all. No, not a, not a bit. It was just a time suck. It was, yeah. it's, it's a waste of money. It's a, it's, you just don't need it really. Your skin's right. great now. Like, you know, yeah, like especially, yeah, especially as you get older, healthier. you know, yeah. you don't want to be an old drunk guy. No. Yeah. No. They don't Definitely. age well. No. Right. There's yeah. no excuses no. anymore. And dude, speaking of aging well, I mean, dude, like uh, I love when when I post something and you're in it, like uh, like a photo of us together, and, and people will comment, "Man, Pontius forgot to age." Oh, <laughs> like stuff, stuff like that of, of like everybody. These two thousand and five. Wow. These two boys. Of everybody, you um, are absolutely like somehow accessing the fountain of youth. Like like nobody has, everybody else has aged worse than you. I think both of you. May actually was saying today that, that you, you aged like fine wine yourself. Yeah, she I actually think said that. Wild Boys, you guys must have found the fountain of youth because, I mean, this is 2005, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You know, like, I do have to say, I don't have to, but I will, that, um, there's something that's so, I'm so grateful for largely maintaining the same appearance as, yeah. as ever. I know, yeah. me too. You know, like, there's not like a lot, like, I mean, if you look closely yeah. forward, you can tell I'm like, I'm old now, yeah. but like, for the most part, like, no, you if, look I, great. if yeah. I post something, it's, it's like, it could be from like any yeah. year. Almost. No, exactly. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Yeah, you Have you great. ever wanted to get a little bit of a jab here no. and there? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a nip and tuck <laughs> now. I, I actually, I had someone accuse me of getting some work done before, and I, I, I was flattered, actually. I don't doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. Um, I was thinking about some of our plane, our funner, during the Wild Boys, some of our more exciting plane rides where, where uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to begin with, with the misbehavior on planes. I guess, I, I, I always wonder, like, why we didn't just get hauled off to jail, like, and because I read about, well, like. I, I did one time. Oh, you did? I recently posted, like, footage that, in hindsight, I probably could have done better to not post it. It, it was just a cringe fest uh -huh. where I was smoking cigarettes on the airplane. <laughs> uh, that was, but that was basically par for the course at that time. And I remember when I got arrested for smoking cigarettes on the airplane, it was, uh, like, the day I got back in America... Or within 20 hours of getting back in America from like 29 straight shooting days in India and Indonesia. That trip took it out of us, though. Yeah. For, for like, it really did. We threw some tantrums on Oh, my Tremaine. God. I, oh, completely. I almost, all right, Tremaine, when we were when in the, the Dioc longhouse and the yeah. Dioc's were forcing us to take shot yeah. after shot. And finally, I just stumbled out of there. Yeah. I, ha I mean, 
I had to drink. It was part of the. It was part right. of the bit. I stumbled out of there, passed out on a bench. Tremaine comes down after everything's done. He starts yelling at me. He's like, "That's you've changed, Chris. This is not the Chris that traveled through Mexico and Honduras on buses." <laughs> yeah, this is the new. Chris. He would call us the new Chris or the new Steve. Yeah, the new <laughs> Wild Boys. And, and um, he, later he said he was just saying whatever he could to know that <laughs> tailored it to say exactly what would piss me off. And I was so mad at him. And we were on these two like motorized canoes. <laughs> Going down a river in the middle of the jungle jungle in Borneo, where I never thought I would have been. And I'm yelling at Jeff. I wanted I was a halfway about to like jump out of the canoe to swim to his canoe to beat him up. I'd never yeah. been so mad at him. <laughs> yeah. And right when we actually got to the docks and parked the canoes, I brought, I walk over him to kick his ass. And he said something like and completely diffused me. And, <laughs> I, I remember too. Like it, it was uh you know, I mean, I, I, I'm almost trying to to hesitate and not say what I'm going to say, but I don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to have no filter and just say it. But I remember on that trip, it became particularly uh, just <laughs> outrageous to us. We were we were outraged. We were we were incensed because we loved our crew. Yeah, right? our crew worked so hard and. Our crew got paid a day rate for every day yeah. that that we that we filmed. Yeah. But we got paid per episode yeah. that we filmed. So the more and, we worked, the better, really. Right. And with with the budget, like MTV would give us a budget to yeah. film an episode. Yeah. But we would go out and come home with two episodes sometimes three sometimes three and, and yeah the, but the crew still and got then, paid and, and on that trip we came back with five i think it was three, amazing yeah we did india, we came back with five episodes three india episodes and two indonesia yeah, it was episodes. insane we came back with five episodes shot over 29 yeah it was incredible it was so exhausting and, and like we yeah the crew the point. crew was so rad because they were so dedicated because they were really working triple overtime every day. They never got overtime. There was yeah, no never such got, thing. There's no such thing as never overtime. got overtime. Yeah, never they, got paid they, for it. They didn't benefit. They got from, paid their, no. They didn't benefit from from uh, getting like whatever, like over double the episodes yeah. we were supposed to shoot. No. But they were so and, rad, and, and 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 I did not take kindly to going twenty nine shooting days without being able to procure any. Hippie hay. Oh my God. <laughs> I, 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 this is something I, I wanted to bring up because your search for ind for hippie hay in Indonesia, <laughs> apparently in Indonesia, hippie hay is next to impossible to find. Well, right, because because uh, by hippie hay, I do mean marijuana. <laughs> and in Indonesia, the, um, like any kind of drug trafficking, I think maybe even just basic drug possession is punishable by actual death uh -huh. yeah yeah like you you don't mess around with that but there was one uh, other um crew member who as like me just needed marijuana badly enough to risk our lives uh -huh. oh my it. god and so we were in jakarta now jakarta was is like <clears throat> Is such some somehow Jakarta, Indonesia, is such a dangerous place that we were strictly not allowed to go there. We were strictly not allowed to set foot in Jakarta uh -huh. by MTV's rules. We wow. were not permitted to go there, but we went there anyway, and <laughs> and we conveniently did not shoot anything in Jakarta because uh -huh. we didn't want to like uh, flag ourselves. For, I don't even know why we were there. But it was, and, and and apparently Jakarta has some big issues with terrorism and, yeah. and, and, and like all kinds of reasons that you just don't want to be there. But we were. Mm -hmm. And while we were in Jakarta, because we were not shooting, this other crew member and myself went into like this, what like what would you call it? A slum, Slums. a slum, yeah. a, like a tent city. Yeah, a like, shanty town. Shanty town. It was like it, it. It was like a city that was kind of tarped over, mm -hmm. like like a mm -hmm. big homeless encampment. But it was like this crazy underworld of just gnarliness. Mm -hmm. And we go there, me, 
Me and Rack. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you wandered out of the hotel into yeah, the slums. Yeah, we, we went in there and and uh, we're like, we just we want weed. And I had the tattoo of the marijuana leaf on my wrist, so uh-huh. I was just pointing to that. Oh my and God. dude, we we went through. It was we could have been so easily just kidnapped. Oh yeah, like kidnapped the person. Oh like, yeah. Uh, there's a whole industry for that. You stuck out like, like sore thumbs. <laughs> we, yeah, like we we we. There is a whole industry. It's, for yes, that. it's more surprising that we didn't get kidnapped. It is. It's insane. Or, or arrested, but we actually procured a small amount of reefer. Oh my and, god! And we rolled it up, and we we uh, we took videos and photos of ourselves smoking smoking it. We called it the Jakarta Death Doobie. <laughs> Did we it risked work? Our, we risked our lives for oh it, and god. no, it was the worst. Bunk swag <laughs> ever. We definitely didn't get high, but but the experience of, of uh, procuring that doobie. I mean, I, I ranked that among the times I could have died. I remember it is for sure. Yeah, your organ. I mean, yeah, you could have been har- you know, had your organs harvested. Very. Anyway. I think <laughs> Jakarta, Jakarta people but, were like, no, I don't want their organs. Yeah. I don't want this guy's organs. <laughs> we, we put ourselves in a situation with very few good outcomes. <laughs> a, what an adventure, though. <laughs> I remember like our our uh, tour coordinator. I remember our tour coordinator coordinator that we'd worked with. The, he was an American guy that lived in Bali, and he oh. was taking it. He was our our like man in Indonesia, and, and you kept hitting him up every day. You know, if you could get he get you some weed. Yeah, he kind of just he wanted promised to, like, me that he would. That's he, he right. told he yeah, you know, and I think he really didn't have. I think he just wanted to like tell he, you what you he wanted told, to hear. He told me, yeah, I'm gonna hook you up, man. I'm gonna hook you up, and I'm like, where do I remember that now? And I remember, and, and I remember <laughs> that on the last night we had like a rap party, and this guy's girlfriend accidentally wound up in the pool with one of our one of our crew, crew members. Crew members <laughs> Penis inside of her. Yeah. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> she yeah. slipped and fell onto she it. She slipped and fell into the pool onto one of our crew <laughs> oh, members. Oh Jesus! Penis. I don't know if it was before or after that that I had one of the most like wonderful one night stands. Oh, um, oh! I think I think so. I went to bed. I actually went to bed early that night. And you introduced me to a Norwegian girl. Yeah, a Norwegian girl. And um, I said, and dude, I like, did a magic I think you trick. woke me up. Maybe you knocked on yeah. my door. Somebody, or I had an early flight, yeah. so I didn't go out that night. And and I ran I into you anyway in the hallway, and you're like, <laughs> look at this. Or look at her. And <laughs> yeah. you had your arm around her. You were so stoked. I said, Chris, I pulled a magic trick. I was in Norway, <laughs> in Indonesia. <laughs> I remember that was like the the like in that pool, man. That was that she was just a, she was something special. Was she in the pool as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that woman, Norway. that woman that our crew member <laughs> met was 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 pool. not so was not so. Oh, was it was it uh, uh, <laughs> uh, his. For, I got. I can't say it. Um, yeah, but a crew better, member. Yeah, better, better that we don't. Um, but also on that trip, I remember that that our, our uh, travel coordinator, who who did a great job. You, you, we were on the island of Flores, which is um, the gateway to Komodo. Um, we were in like the little bar in the little village that we were in, and uh, we were hanging out, having a few drinks, and then you came in, just. Furious, and you're like, you had finally had it with these promises of weed that he'd given you. Yeah. And you're like, I'm gonna kick his ass. And he he go he gets up and to say hi to you. He's like, hey Steve, and you just like you come stomping and, and you just do this gnarly kick, high kick. You completely you were gonna kick him in the balls. You completely missed him, kicked over your head, did a backflip, hurt your back, and just like yeah. like walked off like in pain, like <laughs> well, I'll tell you. it was so awkward. <laughs> That guy got what was coming to him anyway because he, he 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 went he went to go visit that pool and he found his lady in it. Really? Yeah. The and drama. Then I, I think I think he I think he actually witnessed firsthand. I think I I think I heard a quote. Of, he said, "Oh, there you guys are." Or yeah. something like that. <laughs> you know what's oh, so what great? a situation. Oh, what a situation. Oh, what's, what's so great is that I had Tremaine on my podcast and we ran through like some of the gnarliest <laughs> oh my God. like Wild Boys Jackass stories. And I'm positive that we did not cover that. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, there's so much. There's so much. Like we we could we could have <laughs> 
Like, you know when you see like a guilty pleasure, like when you see like something that you like you can't, you shouldn't be enjoying, but, yeah. but seeing you like go to kick him in the balls and, <laughs> and miss just everything about it, like made me so happy. And it was just, after he left, it was so awkward trying to yeah. like explain the situation, like go back to everything being cool. Like, like he really wants his weed, man. <laughs> right, right. You know, but but we had been working so many hours. We were yeah. exhausted, and uh, God. <laughs> and so you know, you know what, I, what I'm, I'm trying. I was trying to to get, and I got it. Is that is you think of someone saying to like like an older guy, like saying, uh, you, you, you know, I, I spilled more alcohol than you ever drank. Yeah, you know, like we literally have forgotten more epic shit than most people have ever lived. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> We've lived many lives. Yeah. I, speaking of smoking on the plane, I remember one flight, we were coming back from Costa Rica, and I overheard you speaking to a, a air hostess, a, a flight attendant. You're like, you're like, she's not my friend. <laughs> not that one. That was Brazil. But this one, you're like, you're like, I could smell cigarette smoke faintly, and you're like, it says it says no smoking with no tampering with a smoke detector. I wasn't the only thing I tampered with was a cigarette. <laughs> it says two thousand two thousand dollar fine for smoking with, tampering with a smoke detector. Right. I didn't tamper with nothing but a cigarette. And then you went back to your seat and you're listening to like ACDC and you're like all of a sudden I hear you yell. It was you must have been listening to for those about to rock because you yell fire <laughs> on a plane. It's like. <laughs> Everyone's just like, what? And I was just laying there so happy that I wasn't the bad guy on the plane this time. And I was just like, it was just music yeah. to my ears. And then some other guy ahead of me, you were behind me. Some other guy rose ahead of me. He's like, whoever's job it is to babysit that guy's doing a shitty job. <laughs> and I was so happy. Dude, how about when we flew into Japan and oh then the God. plane was descending and Pontius like is standing in the middle of the aisle, not just standing in the middle of the aisle, but just peeing himself, standing in the Shirtless. middle of the aisle. And then they're like, sir, you have to get back in your seat. The plane is landing right now. You're just peeing. And then like you try to go back to your seat, but you sit in the wrong seat. Now you're drenched in piss and the person whose correct seat it is they they're like oh no you're sitting in this one you're, this is my seat and now they're sitting in your <laughs> piss know. and like th th like in what world is that okay we just go right into Japan but when we tried to fly home from Japan didn't you have an issue oh yeah like they're like uh, Mr Pontius and I'm like the, the, the <laughs> go, lady, the, <laughs> go hang out in this room <laughs> yeah yeah it was, it was that yeah luckily they let me leave like the lady looks at the computer and gets a weird look on her face then she's like hold on a second and then this this man that was obviously of higher rank, he's like, Mr. Pontius? Yes? You're leaving Japan? Yes. Today? I say, <laughs> yeah. And they're like, all right. And they, they let me go on my way, but they heavily, right. they, and they did not serve me. They did not dare serve me on that flight. But so we're going I was to Japan so, soon too, right? Yeah. You, you, you caught me at the right time in life, though. <laughs> yeah. let, let, and let, let, let me say this. That, that when when I describe this, this you, you're, the plane is trying to land, and, and I, I mean, dude, like you were absolutely standing in the aisleway, peeing. There was like, <laughs> there's 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 no. I don't remember much from that flight, but I do remember everyone looking at me while that was going down, going happening, and I'm just like. What do you have a problem with my manly physique or something? <laughs> the male physique? Yeah, I mean, dude, you, you you did that. You know? That's like, where I was. Th that you did that. You know what the recipe for my behavior was? Actually, it was I at the time I suffered from crazy insomnia, and it was right. Ambient. I got turned on to Ambien. Ambien. So the week before the trip to Japan, and um, then also we were prescribed Ambien, I think, for that flight. So I had. I had uh, quite a bit of Ambien at my disposal, right. and I thought, oh, I'll just take this and I'll wash it down with a little red wine. Right. Oh, it, turns it, out, it turns out that red wine works much better with Ambien. <laughs> my mind, <laughs> my God. So my mind went to sleep, but my body didn't. Right. My mind and spirit were going north and south. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but, oh my God. And then I, oh, God. Yeah, what, what were some other good air, airplane there, rides? There was another one, um, Oh, that, there was another one where uh, we were on our way to Kenya, I think. 
<laughs> oh, dude, God. that was a great that, one. It, uh, I think we had, the... we, we had Wee Man with us, and we we had a layover in London Heathrow. Yes. So I come like during after my layover, <clears throat> come to to our gate, and Wee Man has met this uh, very attractive um, American girl who is flying from London to Kenya. She's on the flight. Huh. And like, and, and we man's just talking to her, this is going great. We get on the plane, the plane is one of these humongous things where the middle rows got like eight seats. Uh -huh. And the plane is borderline empty. Like, so now I'm talking to we man's new friend uh -huh. and, and we were kind of hitting it off. So we sit in a completely empty row of eight seats uh -huh. and like, you know, the plane takes off and we're starting to fool around a little bit, you know? And then I say, you know what, why don't we head back to the lavatory <laughs> and like that is a legit mile high situation like uh, i remember that the, this this young lady was perfectly okay because i had a condom with uh -huh. me and so we had like safe sex with the condom but she would not um she would she would not put it in her mouth <laughs> I, I, I couldn't understand it she didn't want to put it in her mouth but she was okay with uh but it was epic I think I think I later heard that she had a boyfriend back home that that she might have been being unfaithful to also. Was we men bummed out that you said like know. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> but I never you had like 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 you want to get your last licks in right before you land in Kenya. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do it in Kenya. Yeah, like like somebody on our crew. <laughs> later on in, later on in the trip. Should we talk about this? Or I, I, think, his name. I, I think Tremaine and I might have covered this, but I'm not sure. But one of our crew members found it necessary to bring a Kenyan prostitute. Kenya the night. Who was described that, as looking either like Gregory Hines or like Red Fox. But... <laughs> It wasn't a. It wasn't Cosmopolitan's idea of a beautiful girl, and in um, a lady of the night, which you should never do in Kenya, <laughs> like never. Um, but in, anyway, in he, Brazil, we, you'd be an idiot not to. <laughs> <laughs> he took her back to the hotel room, and they. It, there's mixed. There's different stories about what actually went down, but at some point in in their romantic evening, she had to go to the restroom. She goes to the restroom, starts vomiting into the toilet. Out of her backside comes, comes. She started a, vomiting out of her backside. <laughs> yes. So yeah. she, from, Di bo from both sides, and, <laughs> and uh, I guess it just was a huge. It was a really nice hotel. It made it, a big mess it, of the room. It it, uh, it made for an awkward date. Oh yeah. A, oh, God, I think I, I don't know what happened after that, but uh, but I remember the joke was, well, like, uh, did you wear a, did you wear a condom, and uh, and the joke was. I mean, I, I thought I, I thought about wearing a condom, but then I was like, "Well, when am I when am I ever coming back to Kenya?" <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the, the story gets re so he, he I think he did his best to clean up the mess, and oh then God. immediately the next morning tells it to all of his bros. Yeah. So our African crew member is like, "Oh, that is a very bad sign for HIV." Yeah. And, like, and he's That's just gotta like, be like starts number just one. sweating. Like, thank, oh. thankfully he's fine. Yeah, and it, and it gets to alive. be remembered as a fun story, right? But uh, yeah, we'll but, never really know what went down in that hotel room. But you know, a, a couple, God, the crew members, God bless them. But in Brazil, a few of them did get a, uh, I would say, they got addicted to to visiting brothels. Yeah, in a, on their day I remember, right. I remember one of our crew members in Brazil went to a brothel for his first time. And if there is a country to go to a brothel your first time, Brazil is a good one. Of course. <laughs> so he goes, this, this is the story. We, and we, we're all here, like we have call time in the morning, and then we get in the van, we're going to the first shoot. And and like over breakfast in the hotel, we heard that, that this crew member went to his first brothel and couldn't <laughs> decide which of two prostitutes he, he preferred. So he got them both. And we were so happy to hear this. We were just like, yeah, dude. So we get in the van, we're headed to the first location and we asked this crew member, dude, tell us what happened. We're just so happy for him. He, he got two hookers, had sex with both of them. Tell us about this experience. And we're all just waiting with bated breath, hanging on every word. And as he relates the story, he says, I'm, 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 with, I'm with these two girls and, and I'm eating the one's ass. And we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the phone. 
Did you just say that you were eating Brazilian hooker ass? Like, and he goes, yeah, dude, standard procedure, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so that move from then on got known as standard procedure. Yeah. I know they, we were like, so what were you doing? Were you like, while you were having sex with one, you were going down on the other? He's like, um, and they're like, you, you, you licked her, her, her butthole. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's like, yeah, standard procedure, bro. <laughs> Meanwhile, another crew member. <laughs> that, that joined him on on his on the visit to the brothel was walking up the stairs with his choice choice of date and he noticed that she had a little she hadn't remembered to shave her legs that week oh. and and um he complained to the to the um, proprietor to the proprietor of the, the, the madam <laughs> her legs are too hairy and and um so I guess he had to replace her with with one or either he he had to ask her to go have a quick shave or or um wow. maybe he just chose I mean, an altogether you're a little different picky there. Yeah. But the the crew member who performed the standard procedure was never such a picky type. But yeah, St- Steve and I, gentlemen, are we are we um we're not into. I don't I don't think either of us are into well, that world. Except of, for uh, when we went to Russia. Oh, you paid for sex. I, I I got I got I got a, a a lady of the night in Russia. You were never one one to I normally go for lady lady of the night. I, it, we, it, we were the we were not not into that. I think I was, think we're turned was, off by the whole idea of mixing money with with sex. But I remember later on in in Brazil we went to they took us out for our crew there took us for a pizza and then they took us to a strip club and right when we walked in. Like we see the strip, one of the strippers dancing on a table for some Brazilian yeah. patrons, and she she turns to one, and he's he's doing standard procedure right. on her, and then yeah. she turns to his friend, and he starts doing standard and procedure. And we realize that oh. that's what happens in Brazil, bro. Needless to say, standard procedure, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Steve and I eventually did get bored, and but needless to say, a lot of members of the crew had a very late night that night. Yeah, when when we were in Russia. Like uh, we had we had Knoxville with us, uh-huh. and I had managed to bring uh, a, a lady of the night from the brothel back to my hotel, and then and I don't think that any pricing was negotiated ahead of time. Oh so, boy! So in the morning, I snuggled with this 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 lady, snuggled with her, and held her until the morning, and then and then uh, and, and then when you know and we woke up, and she tells me what what she's expected to be paid. And it sounds too much for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like kind of a high number. So I tell her what she's gonna get. <laughs> I think this is what I'm gonna get, and that's it. No uh-huh. more. And she wasn't very happy about that. And so as as we left, which was still a high number. Yeah, Knoxville was Knoxville uh, was in the the breakfast room of the hotel, and and this this lady of the night goes storming by and she screams at Knoxville, he's not Steve-O, he's Cheapo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I, Knoxville loved that. I remember that same night that you guys went there, I received a knock on my door by one of our crew members. And there's like a, a guy that's obviously um, the manager of this lady of the night oh, standing yeah, beside yeah. him. He's like, dude, do you have any money? I, I owe the I owe this woman some some money. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, there, I guess there's an ATM in there. So I, I was happy to loan him some money. So we walked down to the lobby and do that. I'm like, did, did you do standard procedure on her? And he's like, Dude, she did standard procedure on me, <laughs> and he was so stoked <laughs> because he ran out of all his per diem because I, I get he didn't he wanted that night to go on forever. Yeah. But yeah, the, the the manager of this woman uh, was, seemed like a, a guy that could get pretty stern if he had to. Yeah. I remember also in Russia at another hotel we were at in Moscow. I think we've covered the ladies of the night. We have. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't. Have that even, I mean, we've only scratched the surface, but <laughs> I didn't even have that in my mind. Even I actually, I actually managed to get tangled up with ladies of the night and uh, in 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 a number of places. And, and when I had this girlfriend, um, this this British girlfriend, uh-huh. she uh, she asked me, you know, I live by a code of rigorous mm-hmm. honesty, so she asked me. Um, have you ever slept with a prostitute? Mm-hmm. And uh, and 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 I just said, what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and, you know, I was trying to evade the question, <laughs> but she but she uh, persisted with it. And I was like, okay, well, there was this, you know, the, the first the, the one time it was the first time like was uh, in in England with this Russian person. She's any other times, and then she kept 
So whether, you know, there was time in, in, uh, in Mexico and, and, uh, there was time in Indonesia and, you know, there, there was, uh, time, time, time in Russia and, there was, you know, like it just kept coming on me. She kept beating me up for more and more and more. And she said, you talk about your surf passport where you get photos of you having sex and I surf your wake. So she says, you don't need a surf passport. You need a hooker passport. <laughs> for a guy that is not, has no interest in ladies of the night, you've had quite a few ladies of the night. <laughs> I yeah yeah, not too many. I mean, if you th if you really I mean, think about it, I mean, dude, a sliver. I, re a I remember sliver. though that a your lady of the night that you had in England was, uh, I think Tim Powers on the Gumball ra Rally actually yeah hired her for you yeah, and you you would be rude to say no from what Correct. I heard. Correct. And I remember too, like uh, walking in, I was like very uncomfortable. It was my first experience with this, and she was a lovely young lady. And um, she, 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 we, we got into my room, and, and I said, maybe you could give me a massage. And so she's massaging my back. Nervous? Yeah, like, she's massaging my back mm -hmm. for, you know, maybe a, a minute or two. And she says, oh, this is one awfully expensive massage. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like she was making fun of me. <laughs> so I said, you know what? Darn to hell, and I went and put on some good old fashioned Motley Crew and got to work. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Well, this is not on my list, so let's, let's just throw that out. Yeah. God, when when you said like we've covered Blaves of the Night, I just thought of another. I you know, we don't have to talk about it. Another thing in Russia that happened when a uh, should we talk uh the uh oh just say it the, all right it. so Jeez. one of our crew members happens to be from the former Soviet Union and was able to communicate with some ladies of the night. Some of the guys got a crazy idea to take some of our costumes that we had on the road oh, and, right. and have the guys make a movie with some ladies of the night. <laughs> right. I think we might have covered this with Tremaine, but, but in a nutshell, we had this thing that we did for Wild Boys because Wild Boys was a TV show on MTV. And when we finished the episode, before it didn't just we finish it when it goes on TV. Uh -huh. First, when we finish the episode, it gets submitted to what's called standards and practices. Mm -hmm. So they can screen what we've put together and determine if anything is unsuitable for television and as such needs to be edited out mm -hmm. or censored. And so knowing that our content was going to go by like a, a board of a censorship panel uh -huh. we would deliberately film things that we knew were not allowed on tv to just pack them in there so that when we submitted to the censorship board they would say like <clears throat> we give them something to get to poll basically right yeah right. we so call them like, red herring yeah it's like we did do so <laughs> so that and and russia was the last trip so we really leaned into it and and uh the standards and practices board um Rid gave back notes on the episode and they said you have to remove the <laughs> polar bear receiving a blowjob from the Russian hookers. <laughs> and but there was least... multiple polar bears. And I remember <laughs> the crew member that was dressed up as a polar bear uh, with me. <laughs> when I, when, uh, when um, we were sitting on the bed patiently waiting for the, the ladies to come in with our polar bear suits on. And we cut a hole in the polar bear suit so our wieners just came out of the hole and uh the, the, when when the ladies the door opens the ladies walked in this other crew member turns to me and says don't blow this for me <laughs> yeah, that's amazing don't, don't blow this for me what a funny joke though to play on the censor people because yeah people don't know this so we've, we've even we've done this on many like the jackass movies too we oh, yeah. actually learned it during big brother about doing the red herrings because you feed them something that's much worse than the stuff that you want Right to 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 show up. So like, like the um the bellows um fart yeah. um butt bellows thing yeah. with Preston Lacey. That was meant. That was done entirely knowing that they'd never allow it in the movie. But but uh to give them something that was much worse, we we did the bellows up Preston Lacey's butt so we could fart out. But the, then but then the that dust. made it into two point five, right? That that's we didn't know that we were gonna have point fives at that point. <laughs> Luckily, the idea to make it two point five happened. In, in that footage, right. I guess, got to see the light of day. 
Because 2.5 was not a theatrical release. No. So it was not subject to the scrutiny of the Motion Picture Association of America. Yep. And we didn't know that there was going to be a 2.5 at that point. Right. Like, um, we just like, oh, we got so much footage, we we got to do, we should do something with it. So, yeah. So I guess Butt Bellows did see the light of day. And it was amazing. But God. So do you want me to take a radical U-turn or a... I want you to go with your gut. All right. We want to hear about these fake tits that you're planning on getting. Okay. You got it. It, Like, uh, I'm all about it. For I'm at the tail end of my bucket list tour, which uh, is a multimedia experience. And... um, Which I love, by the way, because I win. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, And the... uh, When I wrap up the bucket list tour... Then it's time to start putting together my next tour. Mm-hmm. And and as I said in the beginning of, of our interview, which is going great, by the way, and I really think it's going great. Uh, I said that um, I've, I've made the leap from from grinding in comedy clubs to big theaters. Uh-huh. And now like this, this upward trajectory that I've been enjoying, I want it to continue. I want to leap from the theaters I'm in now to even bigger theaters. I want to I want to just keep getting going up and up and up until I'm in arenas. You want to keep growing as an artist. Yeah, <laughs> right. So my thinking is that this uh, next tour, I've already decided what it's called. It's called steve Gone Too Far Tour. <laughs> I want to just go too far. You know, like we've yeah. da- I've danced on the line for decades, Chris, and it's time for me to boldly step across. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so um, now in... Uh, in a thematic way, the big picture of the show is is that there's two ways of looking at it as well. Gone too far, like I'm 48, you know? I'm, one could argue I've gone too far in time mm-hmm. to be doing this type of stuff. And being 48, we are both 48, yeah. you know, like... Uh, <clears throat> It's it's just I'm grappling with middle age and and this gone too far show is a is is an exercise in me confronting middle age lashing out at middle age, so each big sort of tent pole bit or or big move is inspired by some element of my aging process, like with. Uh, you know, I'm going to dis- discuss like how, how it kind of hurts my feelings to look in the mirror and see I'm much more wrinkled than you are. You know, I see it in my face and I, I see the age showing in my face and I can't stand for anybody to be, <laughs> be looking at these wrinkles. So I'm getting a big dick tattooed on my forehead. <laughs> so that's all I can see. <laughs> see? Very clever. Confronting the aging process. Yeah. Head on. Lashing out at it. <laughs> Pulling on the aging process of yours and making funny faces. Yeah. And sadly, <laughs> I, I, uh, it wasn't long ago I looked in the mirror. And uh, and I and to my horror, I noticed that I, I've developed man boobs. <laughs> no, I have dimples under my man boobs. <laughs> Look, I have under boob dog. Under I got boob. under boob dog, and I'm so angry at the god that would allow this to happen to me <laughs> that I'm lashing out. And I decided that if I have to have tits. Which clearly I do. They're gonna be double D's, baby. Wow! Amazing. Wow! Yeah, man, I got man tits already, so I'm going. How does Lux feel about them? She's not a big fan. (laughs) She's not a big fan. (laughs) But we've been engaged for a marathon five years so far, and uh, one one. (laughs) What, what, <laughs> not just spare tits, but double D's. Double D's. I, I, I understand that I that I can fit double D's. If not, at least D's. Wow. Oh my god. D's or cute. double D's is what is what the professional I consulted said. Have you settled on a surgeon? In, in- I have not. But but I've got my I've got my uh my team of workers diligently uh <laughs> so I know your tits are gonna come out rad. Yeah. I th- I think they are, dude. And, and, and um, I, I, you probably know more about them than I do, but uh, as I understand, under the muscle is both more expensive and invasive. But I, I just it's want the way to it's the way to go. Yeah. Um, my some I have several members of my family that work in in um, the plastic surgery world, oh, so that's why I know so much wow. about this kind of stuff. Should so, I go to your people? <laughs> <laughs> they might be reluctant to, to operate on such a good friend of mine. Okay, yeah, yeah. As much as they love you, um, 
they might be, they might they might have thought you you've gone too far. I yeah. I, want, yeah. I I did ask my brother in law one time when you years ago when you're talking about the idea of getting fake tits, and he's like, that's a. <laughs> Big decision. <laughs> well, I mean, here's, here, here's what I've learned. But clearly you've wanted them for a long time. I mean, I, I, I first, the idea popped in my head uh, in 2020 during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, and uh, I first broke the news of my plan to Nick Swardson and his reaction was priceless. He was <laughs> just disgusted with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, but the thing is too, that, you know, if you look at my knuckles, I used to have shit and fuck tattooed on my knuckles mm -hmm. and I had them lasered off. They're not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So the big dick tattooed on my head, yeah. I can laser that off too. And my, my titties, I only think I'm going to have them for about three months. When you get tired of them, you can remove them. Yeah, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them out and I'm going to go to the world's most famous plastic surgeon, Dr. Terry Dubro of the show Botched, the hit show wow. Botched. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. And he's yeah. going to remove them. He's, he's, he's going to be the one to remove the boobs and he's going to, uh, I think, maybe clean up what's going on. I'm going to have a little, uh, oh, nice. little titty lift. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my man boobs get a little lift job, so I, I, I think I'll come out the other end looking even more. Your tits are going to come out rather than ever, but in a in a male way. Are you gonna First, you're going to have rad girl tits, then you're going to have rad guy tits. Right. Are you taking these tits on tour? I'm not. I don't. I, I imagine that I'm going to film all of my vignettes mm -hmm. for the tour during the three month period that I've got the tits. Are you going to yeah. wear a bra? Yeah, I'm gonna you do might it have all, to. You might have, I'm, I'm you might have to. You might have to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it all. Yeah. Like, I know you're you, you're gonna go all the way with I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna have like a bunch of like you know kind of hidden camera prank mm. things. Oh, yeah. You know, like for for comedy bits with the tits. <laughs> I'm gonna have stunts. It's gonna open up a whole new world to you. I, I think it's gonna be pretty great. You're gonna have yeah. um have to laser it off because hairy tits. Or are you gonna I keep the hair? wax? Probably yeah. wax, but I want to have like two versions, like hairy, like, hairy, hairy tits and, 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 and sexy and smooth. That's gonna be one hell of a meet and greet if you did take yeah. it on tour. I, I think I'll be restored back to normal before I actually go on the tour. Yeah, and it'll all be describing it and you know having had the experience of you know doing it all, and I'll be relating it all. In uh, are you gonna get any implants? Like, no. when you do it all? Oh, no. like the, the yeah, fake you know, muscles? You know, you like yeah. Simon Cowell style? Yeah. You know, my homophobic dad, when I told him I was going to get tits, he said, and how long are you going to wait until you do the bottom half? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't soaked on your fake tip. <laughs> he loves it. Um, <laughs> he's, but yeah. He's, he's gotten, he's a... I think that there's, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sensitive too because among the other things on the... the uh, oh, I, I didn't... Okay, dude, check this out. Um, and part of middle age as well mm -hmm. is is getting a colonoscopy, uh -huh. prostate yep. exam. Mm -hmm. So you go to the doctor, you get the finger up the butt, you go, you know, and you have the colonoscopy procedure. They go mm -hmm. up your butt. Of course. And um, I ha um, have the guys um, reaching out to colonoscopy doctors. Mm -hmm. And, and saying that, you know, th this guy, Steve-O, he's known as Steve-O, he's making a documentary about middle age and he, he wants to, to come to, you know, say that about a colonoscopy, but everything has to be on camera. Mm -hmm. So when I go in there, I'm going to say, yeah, like, you know, I'm at that age, I got to get a colonoscopy, but doc, like what I really want to know is how big can I go? Uh -huh. Like, what can I fit in there? Wow. Oh, you know, and, and I believe, I predict that the doctor's going to kind of urge me to not try to test the boundaries and uh -huh. push the limits of what can be fit up my butt. Yeah. But I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to go for a second opinion from a male porn, a gay porn star. No way. Yeah, who's already my bro, Pierce Paris. He's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> he's a legend. Yeah, he's, he's already taught me about training my inner butthole. No way. If I can train my inner butthole, then sky's the limit, Chris. Wow. <laughs> so the next question becomes, well, if I'm going to put something like shockingly large up my butt, maybe I could push it a step further. <laughs> and I thought if I, if I could, I mean, of course I can get like a, a, a fairly shockingly thick, clear PVC pipe uh -huh. with, um, like a, a bottom to it, like a cup has a bottom. Uh -huh. Or not. 
But put that clear PVC pipe fully in my butt and then enlist yours truly (laughs) to usher your beautiful penis into (laughs) into the the clear PVC pipe, then technically your dick would be up my ass. (laughs) But it would not be gay. (laughs) I'm glad you're presenting that this genius idea to both of us. Yeah. Because I I think it is a decision that the answer needs to be made as a family. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't even necessarily have a have to have a boner. (laughs) All you have to do is usher your wiener. <laughs> usher. <laughs> Just usher it into the PVC pipe. You know, how big is this pipe? I mean, you thinking this big? I mean, I don't know. It's just, that this pipe, is a clearance. That this pipe is going like to be as clearance. big as you I better do know. some serious inner anal training. Yeah, inner butthole training. Dude, yeah. don't worry, I've like, got the best. I've got, got the best of the best. My God. The best in the world. <laughs> You're amazing. Yeah. And, and, oh and, and now, like, I got, like, candidly, my idea was, since I was going to be uh, training with a gay porn star, uh-huh. That he just go ahead and blow a load into that pipe. <laughs> oh my god! But that was too much for my lady. That was too much. Now, now, let the record reflect. Let the record reflect. There is zero question about whether Pierce Paris would blow that load into my ass. He There's would. Zero question. Oh, in a fucking heartbeat. In a oh fucking god. heartbeat, he'd see do it with a big old smile. But that's where your sweetheart drew the line. That's where my sweetheart drew the line. So it's okay with luck. If your flaccid wiener <laughs> ushers itself, so into is that, that okay pipe. with her? Yeah, yep. I mean, it's minor. It's minor. But the problem that we run into, the problem that I run into with this show as a whole, is that between <laughs> between the boobs and, and and the the PVC pipe, you know, like we, we I, I, it becomes a concern that I'm alienating a contingent of my audience. I, I they might. So I need to load it up with really radical stuff too, the you know, like out. cool rad stuff. Tough guy stuff. Yeah, tough guy <laughs> stuff. Which is why I bought the smart car. <laughs> I bought a smart car for no purpose other than to crash it directly into a brick wall to make sure the airbags work. Oh Jesus! But it's not an airbag test. Really, Chris. It's a fun bag test. <laughs> <laughs> with your boobies. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing I want to do with my big fake boobs is crash a car into a brick wall because that's just fucking cool. Oh yeah. I think yeah. I think your boobs not only will will survive the crash and but uh they will they will brace you and cushion yeah. you nicely. I know. And thank God you're choosing the big ones. I know. <laughs> what I want to know is if I kind of if I lay down on the ground, can I be dribbled like a basketball? <laughs> 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 I'm still bad. thinking about the PC pipe. Let, let, let me not give away my all my plans. Yes. I'm left this hard. <laughs> oh my let me not give away all my plans. Let me leave something to the imagination. But Jeez. but yeah, my idea is that oh my God. it's hot in here. It's so hilarious. My, so my idea is that the Gone Too Far tour will yeah. take me to that next level. <laughs> I think it's a tour that everybody's just gonna have to see. Even oh. even if you know what my plans are going into it, that says nothing about how it's all gonna pan out. These ideas of you of yours though, they are the fountain of youth. Because yeah. I can see yeah. you just glowing as you're telling me them. Well, thank you. And thank you. And it, it's it's fun. You know, it's fun because I'm, I am too fucking old to, to do this shit. And uh, making a show that just embraces that, you know, that making a show about being too old, you know, yeah, that fucking gets me really excited. Now you took me by surprise with with these new ideas. Yeah, and, and, uh, it, that, you know, like your penis has the job, and you didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. This is so funny. <laughs> Chris doesn't know how to read. I've got all these no different subjects. Now. All right, well, I'm gonna take a sharp. I'm gonna take a sharp view. You know what? We could also save it for a, a, a part two. I think there's a lot to be said for recognizing the gold mine that we have of topics to touch on uh-huh. and thinking for the long game yep. about just let's not give it let's not give them everything in one blast all right yeah this has been gone in directions i never even thought yeah. it would go in and i think 
I think more than any other time of talking to you, I think you really showed the beauty of what's behind your ideas. And <laughs> oh, I think, you. <laughs> I mean, as crazy as these ideas are, I, I think I, I come out of it with a warm feeling in my heart. Well, thank you. I think that uh, I'm going to rid the world of transphobia <laughs> <laughs> once and for all, once yeah. and for all. I love, I love yeah. it. I love your idea of going too far. I think I'm so, I think this has been, I've wanted to interview you as a journalist for right. so long. Cause I, right. as, from big brother days on like to, and, yeah. and actually properly interview you. And I, and I'm, and, and we've just scratched the surface. And we, we've just, Ooh, I've, I yeah. I've, I've haven't hit, I've hit I, about half the things I wanted to ask right. you about. And, so and, we're and gonna, you, you haven't even thought of half the things. I know. Cause so much stuff come out, came out, but I'm so excited. So we're gonna do this again. Wait, wait, we're gonna wrap this up. Here. This is this is but part one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, but, this part is but part one. one. Yeah. And but, I'm gonna I'm gonna go home right now. I'm gonna tell Lux. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> I'm gonna tell Lux. Chris Pontius didn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say yes. But he didn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> Always the option. And I'm so stoked that after all these years, we're still sitting here having a great time oh, together. Dick. I mean, bro, I, like I said earlier, I recognize that uh, that small doses was even tough to handle of me, you know? And like, I've improved a lot. I've gotten a lot better at being like, it's easier to be around me, but... It's not easy. <laughs> you know, like, I'm a lot. I'm a lot to handle and I'm a lot to put up with. And the fact that we've made it this far. I mean, dude, we're almost fucking 50 years old. I know. It's I'm... almost a full half of our lives. Together. We were both 26 yeah. Yeah. when Jackass started. Mm -hmm. So 26 times 2 is 52. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost half we're of almost our lives. We're almost there. And I'm so stoked that... Still, you telling me your ideas, I'm still shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Should, like ever, ever more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's awesome. And thank you, everyone that is stuck with us, watching us all these years, too. Yeah. And, uh, you, you're a, um, I don't know if I want to save this for the next one. Let's save Let's the save, next I, one. Yeah, there's so Everybody, much. Everybody, welcome to the Chris Pontius channel. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>